Hey gang, Mark Sweeney here, Austin Dental Spa. I'm the owner and chief dentist at Austin Dental Spa. If you've tuned into a Wisdom Wednesday before, then you know a little bit about our format. Uh, we usually go through some kind of new scientific information that might be of interest to most of you out there. And um, we always have a new theme for the month, and this happens to be the first Wisdom Wednesday episode of November. So. I get to introduce our new theme for the month, which is turn over a new leaf in November. Uh, it won out barely over just leave me alone. Um, but, um, but anyway, so it's turn over a new leaf. So we're going to talk this month uh, for the four sessions or so that we do of Wisdom Wednesday. We won't do one the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, so you'll, you'll get a break from me then. But then I think we have one more after Thanksgiving, uh, and that'll wrap up the month. But we're going to talk about turning over a new leaf. And, but before we do this, in case you're thinking I look a little scruffy, you know, last month was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This month, uh, for at least 20 years now, I have stopped shaving on Halloween morning and don't shave again until November 30th or sometimes December 1st, depending on what time of the week those days fall. Um, and it's because uh, about 20 years ago, a good dentist friend of mine in Oakland, California, died of undiagnosed prostate cancer. He was only in his late 50s, college athlete, healthy guy, um, team dentist for the um, Golden State Warriors. He was a six foot six strapping healthy guy. And by the time they diagnosed it, he already had blood in his urine and, and he was gone in like six months. So uh, we found out, he, me and several friends of his, uh, that wanted to find a way to uh, keep him in our memory. We found out about some Australian guys back in the early 2000s that had a very similar thing. One of their good friends died and they were all fairly young at the time. Uh, and they decided they wanted to show uh, respect to their friend. So every year in the month that he happened to die, which happened to be November, they stopped shaving. And uh, they, they nicknamed it Movember instead of November, like uh, Mustache November down in Australia. They call a mustache a Mo. And so they called it Movember and they all grew mustaches. Well, as it's traveled around the world and picked up speed over the last 20 or so years, uh, it's become more about just growing facial hair. And it's more than just prostate cancer now. It's about uh, men's health awareness in general and men's suicide prevention. So it's our one month of the year that it gets to be all about us guys. Uh, so anyway, it's going to get scruffier and scruffier through the month. And then all of a sudden, the first episode of December, I'll be back to clean shaving again. Um, so anyway, um, that's, a, that's my Movember story. Now, what are we going to talk about today with turning over a new leaf? We're going to talk about five scientifically proven ways to get rid of bad habits. Now, I didn't write this. I didn't make these up. This is from research, from being out there. You know, habits in general are a good thing. Getting up in the morning, if you follow the same habits, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, taking a shower before that, you know, you're less likely to forget anything in step if you've got medications to take. If you're in a routine or a habit, it's more likely that you're not going to forget anything. If you took a different way to work every day, eventually you're going to end up being late because you're not prepared for the, the, the routines and you thought it was going to take one length of time and it took something else. So for the most part, habits are good. But not always. Sometimes habits can lead us astray. And that's what we're going to talk about is that, you know, habits such as smoking, drinking excessively, uh, eating too much, uh, especially sweets this time of year. So uh, there was actually some uh, studies done. Uh, the one we're talking about is a, a director of the University of Oregon's Social and Effective Neuroscience Lab. Who knew there was even such a thing? But this guy wrote several papers, and uh, this was five different ways to ch change bad habits into good habits. Number one, you're not going to like some of these because they're, they're, they're like, you know, exercise and sleep better. But number one is sink your stress levels. Um, you know, 
stress is, is, is never or almost never a causative agent of some issue, but it takes bad situations and makes them worse. So if you've got a headache and you're under a lot of stress, the headache's going to be worse than it would have been if you were able to handle that stress better. Um, there are neurons in the brain. We can get into all the neuroscience, but I'll, I'll spare you all that or it'll put you to sleep. But that segues way into one of the ways to reduce your stress is get more sleep. Another one is exercise regularly. I know you hear this all the time from me. And another one is uh, meditative techniques or stress reduction things like, you know, just sitting in a quiet room for a while. There, there are multiple things like that, transcendental meditation, uh, which I love because it has the word dental in it. Um, so that's, that's step one um, is, is uh, reducing your stress levels. Second is know your clues. You know, every habit has has three things. It has a cue, a routine, and a reward. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. If you didn't have the reward at the end and you didn't have the cue at the beginning, you wouldn't develop uh, the, the, mid, the middle part, the routine. So a lot of people have cues. If you're a smoker and it's uh, coffee break time, I've got them right over here in the building next to me. 10 o'clock every morning, I can see them out one of our windows. There's a group of about six people that are out there at 10 o'clock every morning smoking cigarettes. They don't all work in the same uh, office. They work in the same building, though, and they all know each other now. They go out there, and they're high-fiving, and they're, they have a smoke break for about 10 minutes, and they go back inside. And then usually, some, probably sometime in the afternoon, they do the same thing. I'm busy enough in the afternoons I don't see that happen but that's that's their cue is that everybody else is taking a coffee break um, if you're a dessert eater if you love if you're a sugar holic um, the waiter bringing the dessert menu around might be your cue and if you look at it and you start looking at oh man I haven't had cheesecake in you know two weeks um, that <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be your routine because you do it every time and then your reward is going to be the sugar high you get afterwards um, if 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 you're a drinker and four o'clock comes around and you're always having a glass of wine at four o'clock when the clock gets to 359 that's your cue you know you, you want the reward and so your routine is to do that so um, knowing those cues leads to the number three, which is replace a bad thought with a good one. You know, if, if you are that person that four o'clock every afternoon, you're used to having a drink, it may take a little willpower, but their research shows that if you replace that, if at four o'clock every afternoon, you start going for a run, or let's say 5.30 instead, beer 30. Uh, you start going for a run with other people to ho help hold you accountable or go to the gym every day at five o'clock um, with other people, then you're replacing those bad thoughts with good thoughts and you're more likely to follow through. If it's left up to you and your own willpower, well, all hell can break loose. And, and so they, they have done a study, it was way back in 2008, but they actually did a study and it was published in a magazine called Appetite. <laughs> what a great magazine title. Um, but they found that people who are chocoholics, they think about chocolate all day long and they can't wait till they get home that night and they can eat chocolate. And smokers did the same thing when, when, when they were trying to tell themselves to stop smoking. They actually thought about smoking more than when they were smoking because they didn't think about it until 10 o'clock when the coffee break came around. But when they're trying to stop smoking, they're thinking about smoking all day long. And I've heard that from patients of mine that are smokers, that when they try to stop smoking, they can't think about anything else. So you've got to take some willpower, but replace those bad thoughts with good thoughts so that it will stimulate some new behaviors. Uh, number four, and we're almost to five, uh, have a better reason for quitting. How many of you out there in the listening audience have uh, <laughs> on January 1st said, I'm going to lose some weight. So you go get your high school uh, 
football picture, you know, or, or some picture of you in your younger years when you were buffed out and you stick it on the refrigerator door to remind you every time you go in there to get a snack that that's what your goal is, what you want to look like, what you used to look like, or you put a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's probably out of reach for most people. But same idea, it's, it's getting, giving you a better reason to, to quit the bad habit. Um, and it and it can work if you you have to have the willpower to to set the goal and do it, and that segues way into number five, which is set better goals. You know, if you don't have goals, uh, you know, uh, it, it, then they, there's an old saying that you know if you if, uh, the, uh, if you blindfolded the archer and spun him around a couple of times, there's no way he's going to hit the target. And um, because he can't see the target. But if you don't even have a target, then you don't have anything to shoot for. So set a good goal. This is a great time of the year, November, December coming up. People set routine end of the year goals in 2023. I'm going to do this. So set some good goals for yourself in the next two months and see what happens. It, it, and you, you've got two months to kind of gear up and say, January 1st, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a picture of myself in my 20s or from my first wedding, you know, when I was happy um, up on, on your refrigerator uh, door so that you can you can have a have a better goal. So that's my health tip for the week is over the next two months, Pick one thing, pick one goal, one habit you'd like to change or one goal that you'd like to achieve next year and get all the stuff set up so that you've got the picture to put on the refrigerator wall on uh, New Year's Eve <laughs> and, um, and see if, you can, if that'll help you achieve it. So that's my turn over a new leaf for the first episode of November. I hope you, uh, we all have a great month in November. The, Christmas decorations are starting to come out and it hadn't even been Thanksgiving yet. But I'll see you next week for another version of Turn Over a New Leaf in November. Bye.